Hey, Kellan kids, I hope you've had a fantastic, fantastic week. It is so good to see you here today. This is what we're going to do today. So make sure you get all of your paints, all of your stuff together, ready to make busy bees and a busy beehive. But before we do that, we are just going to look at the verse, Proverbs 16, verse 24. So get yourself comfortable and we are going to dive straight in. So this week's verse is Proverbs 16, verse 24, which says this, Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Now, how many of you have had honey before? I have. I have it on my toast and it's really, really, really nice. It makes things a lot more tasty. But how many of you have ever had a lemon, maybe out of the cork when you're on holiday, or maybe just you've seen some lying around and you've bitten into a lemon and it's super, super sour? There's a massive difference between honey and lemons. And quite often that can be the case for nice words and nasty words. Because have you ever heard that saying that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? I have, but I don't think that's very true. Because so many times in my life, things have said, people have said things to me that's really hurtful. And I've remembered them for a long, long time. And so what today is all about and what this verse is all about is thinking about what we say before we say it. Are we going to be like the honey that is going to be lovely and tasty and super nice? Or are we going to be like the lemon, which is really super sour and not very tasty? Because kind words are like honey. They are sweet and they are pure and they are lovely. And in this time of lockdown, when you're stuck in the house with your grown-ups and you're stuck in the house with your brothers and your sisters and maybe even your dogs and cats, and there's a lot of you there, it's super helpful to make sure that we are always being kind, that we are always being nice and that we are always using words that are sweet like honey. So what would you rather be? Because I know that I would rather be like the honey. And speaking on honey, what we're going to do is this craft, which is all about buzzy bees and their honey. So are you ready to make some? Me too. Let's go. So to start off with, we are going to make the beehive for all the little buzzy bees to go and live in. So what we're going to do is grab bubble wrap. So if you can find any at home, make sure you grab it. If not, if your parents have had... An Amazon delivery in the last couple of days, what you'll find is in there is actually all the bubbles that you're going to need to make your lovely, lovely prints. But I have actually got bubble wrap. So what you need to do is get the bubble wrap, get some yellow paint and pop some paint on the bubble wrap. Make sure you cover it on all the really lovely bubbly bits so that we can get a real good beehive effect. So once you've covered all of that area, just pop it on your piece of paper, squish it down, and then keep going all over like that, making a lovely beehive. So I need to put a little bit more paint on to get a little bit more coverage. And then I'm gonna pop it on the places that I haven't quite been yet. But if you don't have any bubble wrap at home, make sure you try and find a little straw because you can also do this with that too. Might take you a little bit longer, but you can still get the same beehive effect. Try your best though to have a paper straw because they tend to work a lot better than plastic, but plastic does work too. So what we're going to do with that one is just pop it in the paint, some little, little circles with it to make your beehive like that. Once you've created your beehive, make sure that you leave it on the side to dry so that we can move on to the next part. So my paper has now dried up nicely. So once yours has too, what you need to then do is get a pen because we're going to draw the beehive shape. So we're going to go round like this, like this, like this, and then finish it off. There. So once you've drawn your beehive shape, it should look like this. What you're going to then do is take a pair of scissors and cut it. Now, if you're a little bit too small to be using scissors, make sure you ask a grown-up if they can help you do it. So what you're going to do is chop, 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 just like this, around the edges to make sure that you have your beehive. 
So once you've cut out your beehive, it should look like this, and you're now ready to put it on your piece of paper. This piece of paper is something that you should have printed off from the Callon Church website. If you haven't already done so, just pop now to Callon Church forward slash online and get a grown up to print it off for you. So what we're going to do is once it's printed off, we are going to use some glue and glue your beehive onto your piece of paper. So I've glued the back of my beehive. Make sure you glue the back and not the front. And once you've done that, pop it on your piece of paper just like this. Pat it down and make sure you've got a lovely, lovely beehive. We're now going to move on to the bit where we're going to do some buzzy bees. So for this, you're going to need your yellow paint again and your thumbs. So give us a nice big thumbs up. Looking great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my paintbrush, dip it in the yellow paint, get my thumb and I'm going to paint on there. So once my thumb is fully painted, I'm going to take my thumbs up and I'm gonna pop some bees all around my hive, just like this. Now, if you can see that there, I didn't quite get enough paint on my thumb to do another bee. So I'm just gonna go back into my pot, paint my thumb again, and do another bee. One, two. So now that I've done my buzzy bees, I'm now gonna make a little door on the beehive so that they can go in and out. So for that, what you're gonna need is another paintbrush that's nice and clean, some brown paint ready to paint on your door. Round like this. And make a nice door. So I'm just gonna fill in the door, just like this, just like that. And then once you've finished painting your door, and put in all of your buzzy bees by the hive, just like this. You need to pop it to the side and leave it to dry for a couple of minutes. So while I'm waiting for my buzzy bees and their hive to dry, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that verse that we read earlier. So, before you speak, I want you guys this week to actually think about what it is you wanna say. And so T in the word think stands for, is it true? Now, how many of you have sometimes said a little lie to mom and dad to either get your brother or sister in trouble or to actually get yourself out of trouble? Because I have once. But what you've got to make sure that you do is before you speak, that you think about, is what I'm saying actually truthful? Because if it's not, then it's actually not worth saying because it's not beneficial and not helpful to anybody. So before you speak, is what you say truthful? So the second letter in our word about thinking before we speak is H. Now H stands for, is it helpful? Now sometimes, and I bet you know this, that sometimes we can say things that either make people feel better or make people feel a little bit sad, depending on the circumstance. And so what I want you to think about is, before you speak, is what you're saying helpful or unhelpful? Is it gonna make someone feel happy or make someone maybe feel a little bit sad? Because when we're all living in a house together like we are now, we need to make sure that everything that we say is actually really happy and really helpful. So the third letter in our think before you speak is I. Now I stands for, is it inspiring? Now, everybody say that word, inspiring. It's a big word, isn't it? And it actually holds a big, big meaning too. Because inspiring means that you're more or less encouraging someone and building someone up. So basically what that means is you're helping them do better. So I remember once when I was in school, someone told me that a picture that I drew was really, really bad. And that didn't inspire me. That actually made me feel really sad. Now what would have inspired me is if they would have said, actually, Karis, your drawing isn't good, but your singing is fantastic sick and that would inspire me to sing more because sometimes when I see other people that sing so much better than me it inspires me to sing just like them and I'll actually change and do things to make me a better singer because they have inspired me and in this time where you're at home with your moms and dads and your brothers and sisters try and inspire them tell your mom that you loved her cooking tell your brother that he did so well when he did five keep yuppies in the garden inspire them to be better so letter number four in our before you speak think is n 
for is it necessary? I know it's another big word for us to learn today, but basically what necessary means is, is what you're about to say really needed? Because sometimes we can say things or maybe do things that isn't really needed. So for example, when I told you about that person that said to me that my drawing wasn't very good, did he really need to tell me that my drawing wasn't very good? No. And sometimes we can find ourselves saying these things to maybe make us feel a little bit better. But what I want to ask you today is before you think, before you speak, you need to think, is what I'm going to say actually necessary? Is it needed? So the last letter of before you speak, think is K. Now K is for the word kind. Now how many of you have actually heard that saying that if you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say it at all? You have, me too. My mum used to tell me that all the time. And that is so true because sometimes we can find ourselves saying things that maybe isn't kind and isn't very nice just because we want to upset our sister because she took our toy yesterday. I know you've done that because I've done it too. And so what I want you to do is in this time where you're at home, I want you to really think, is what I'm going to say kind? Is what I'm going to say actually nice? Is what I'm going to say beneficial to this situation, to my sister? Am I being a nice person by what I'm about to say? So is what you're saying before... Ugh. So when you think before you speak, think about whether or not what's coming out of your mouth is kindness. So just to recap what we've just talked about, before you speak this week, I want you to think, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary or needed? And is it kind? Because I know that if you guys are true, helpful, inspiring and kind people, then you are going to be the loveliest people to live with while we're here in lockdown. So now that our painting is dry, we are going to go and finish off our buzzy bees. So I'm going to take a pen and get ready to do my buzzy bees. For this, you've got to make sure that you find your buzzy bees. Draw a line, a line, little buzzy bee wings and some little antennas. So I'm just going to do that now on all of my lovely little bees. So two lines, some little wings and some antennas. So there we are, our buzzy bees are already buzzing around our buzzy bee hive. Good job. So what we need to now do is all the words at the bottom, we need to color those in lovely, pretty colors. So grab your felt tip pens or some crayons and get coloring. And that's it for the craft. Job well done. And I hope that you have enjoyed. So please, please, please take pictures of your buzzy bees in their buzzy bee hive and hashtag Calon Kids and tag us in your pictures and ask a grown up to help you do that so that we can see all of your fantastic buzzy bees buzzing around their hive. And remember, this week, think before you speak because kind words are like honey. See you next week, kids. Bye.